remember, shower, drink some water, and get some rest. <laughs> then you can get back to me when, you, when you're done hacking again. But awesome, you got the spirit. Moving to cyber. Like cyber's thirsty as fuck. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, you, can we, say, we, you can say what you like. I like it. I'd rather have the raw, need, raw need, person. Go, go for it. We need people there. Yeah. Uh, and if you're doing, uh, if you're doing sysadmin work today, and you want to get into pen testing, do it, do it now. Come to the dark side. It, it's <laughs> fun. We have cookies. But there's never too late. It's never too late. Hey everyone, it's David Bombal back with a very special guest. This guest is based in Sweden. So really excited to have someone from Europe eventually. So Stuk, you got to tell me how, how to pronounce your name properly and introduce yourself. Thank you. Yeah, it's Stuk. Stuk. So S-T-E and K. So Stuk. Stuck. Sorry, my apologies. Oh, you so, got it. That's perfect. That's the way to go. Uh, <laughs> most people say like Stoke or Stoke Frederick or whatever, and I have no problem being uh, stoked. So I guess that works. Well, there you as go. Well, I, so. I like that. So, so tell us about <laughs> yourself, because I mean, I, I know you were interviewed by my good friend Network Chuck, and um, you introduced yourself to his audience, but I would like to introduce you to my audience, and um, sort of tell us a bit about your journey and and what you're up to these days, because since that interview and other stuff I've seen online, you know, things have changed. Everything has changed, right? Isn't that how, uh, with, with the pandemic taking one step through the door, everything is turned into, yeah, whatever. A nightmare, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, hi, my name is Fredrik Alexandersson, but I'm probably more known like my, by my hacker handle, Stuck. Yep. Uh, I'm from Gothenburg, Sweden. Uh, nice place. I have worked in IT and InfoSec for the last 25 years. I'm a hacker and creative. And I currently work at a, co- at a Stockholm-based company called TrueSec, where I'm working as the bridge between the experts and marketing and also working, working heavily on the purple side. So I'll say this. This interview is not sponsored by anyone. So whatever we say, yeah, it's just our opinion. So tell us a bit about, like, you were, if I remember right, you were, like, in the blue team sort of, like, infrastructure for 20. 20- 20 years or something and then Easy. you yeah yeah no, definitely <laughs> you've been in this game for a long time so you you were doing that and then you did something else and now you've you're doing something new so can you explain a bit about your journey absolutely so um i started in the i say mid 90s but my first like it gig was building yeah. computers at this uh, computer mill where you're, you're kind of building computers for people that for buying home PCs, right? Yeah. Um, and after that, I, I went into networking and eventually, you know, NT4 and uh, and all <laughs> these uh, good old stacks came out. And I've been in Windows Enterprises ever since. So I have easily 20 years as the troubleshooter of people's um, active directories. Because you mean, you mean people's dumbness, because people don't do, they do dumb things, don't they? But sorry, go on, I interrupted they, you. They do, but, but, but then again, it's human, right? Yeah, and, you yeah. know, not everybody just uh, probably knows always what they're doing and, and everybody's stressed or maybe, yeah. you know, you're working at this big company and you have 5,000 people working there and it's a, it's a bunch of servers. And back in the days, there were racks and racks and racks of servers running and you weren't maintaining it like these virtual blobs today and you know somebody had to be the one that troubleshooted some certain things and some others like now it seems like the roles are very specialized like okay i'm working in network i'm working in hardware and such back in the days you kind of need to know it all you if if, if something failed you know there's some problem with some kind of uplink in 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 um in a, in a stack of switches, you you need to be the one to figure that out. So you, you need to understand how that works. And then you had Cisco and you have Dell and you have all yeah. these different suppliers of hardware and HP. And you end up in a situation where you kind of need to understand networking. You need to kind of understand servers and hardware and functionality, uh, changing RAID disks, uh, upgrading memory and all that stuff. And also, you know, installing servers, updating drivers and firmware. I was doing consultancy sysadmin for a long, long time. And when people build these huge data centers that they were hosting on-prem, cloud wasn't on the market, maybe some kind of replication between data centers, of course, but it it was mostly like an on-prem solution. And people, sometimes things just stop working. Like DNS, for instance. Yep. Like it's always, <laughs> it's always DNS. Always DNS, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, I was the guy that you would call if things broke. So this, this, is, this is busted. We don't know what to do. And me and some other guys were come out as consultants and, and help people out. 
Yeah. And I've been doing that for 45,000 hours paid work or so. So and, I've and been then, in the game for a while. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you know, you, don't worry, I'm, 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 I'm old as well. I remember NT4 and, and all the rest of it. So tell me, you, like, I think, it, I'm not sure if I got the dates right. About two or three years ago, you decided to move into uh, Bug Bounty, is that right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So explain, explain a little bit about that. And then I want to get your sort of input about, you know, based on that experience, what would you recommend people do? Um, I'll put a link below to a video that you did, which I think was the top five ways to get into bug bounty or tips, but I'd like to get like an updated version. So give us a little bit of your story, how, how you got into that and sort of like based on your experience, what would you recommend some, someone do or don't do if they want to get into that? Absolutely. I mean, uh, <laughs> Because it's interesting, you know, yeah. in my background as uh, somebody that, um, that has that kind of sysadmin background, I realized that I understood where people cheated. I, yeah. I, I turned out to be an extremely good pen tester because I know where misconfigurations happened. I understood yeah. where, where people were not being cautious about um, usernames and passwords and configuration and such. So um, when I first stumbled upon bug bounties, it was... I saw it the first time in 2017 when I was at DEF CON, uh, which is a hacker conference in, in Las Vegas. And, uh, and I had a couple of friends of mine that were, they, they were participating in something called a live hacking event. And I didn't know what that was, but I kind of social engineered myself to be a part of, uh, of, of that event and um, to be in the bar. I mean, that, that was good enough for me. I, I was looking for free drinks, not, not, not doing kind of unpaid work or whatever. Uh, I, I, I was having a good time. So I went there and uh, and I see all these people sitting there and they're like, oh yeah, no, we're hacking X company now. I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, we're hacking this company and if we find bugs and vulnerabilities in it, we'll report it and we'll get paid. I'm like, That's cool. what the? That, that, seem, that seems cool. You, even there's not gonna be any consequences because I come from a generation where yeah. if you poked at things on the internet, that would be like a, it would be criminal. It would be yeah. problematic. You don't do that. And um, even though I have some hacking background when it comes to um, pen testing, primarily like networks and such, I never, I never went against companies that I wasn't involved in. Like yeah. the, you're very concerned about uh, your client, of course, but I, I never poked at random stuff on the internet. It wasn't my thing. I, I was on the blue team side, right? Yeah. And so, so, so when I am there and I meet all these cool people and I can see that they, they're making a lot of money, I'm like, how do you do that? <laughs> and I ended up in, uh, and, and months later, um, almost like yeah, eight, eight or months later, I had the opportunity to travel with Franz Rosen, which is a um, great guy, awesome hacker. Um, I had the possibility to travel with him uh, with Hacker One, yeah. which is a bug bounty platform, to India for one of the first live hacking events there at Nullcon. And, it, and I was primarily there as a, a photographer. I wanted to take photos and I wanted to engage and, you know, I want to hang out. I didn't hack at all um, because I want to document the whole experience of people getting together and, and hack it because I was intrigued. Yeah. So I was sitting there in a the hotel room and one of the founders of Hacker One, Jobert, I, I was editing away and, 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 you know, having a couple of drinks. And I was like, Jobert, can, can, can't you show me some hacking? He's like, yeah, yeah, cool. Check this out here, and and and, and he shows some some site, and and uh, it's like, okay, this is using, using this blah 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 version. Oh, maybe it's maybe this is vulnerable to SQL injections, and and you know, and he started to to show me a mindset on on how to think, and I'm like, I, I got that instantly. So yeah. that was the first time I saw the pen testing tool or the proxy name Burp, and I've been more or less using that every day ever since. It's, it's, it's my daily driver. I use that even more than I do with my other kind of equipment. It's, it's my staple tool for, for hacking. And from there, a couple of months later, I decided to, um, to, to, get, to get into it, like, or uh, I got bitten by the bug like the first second. I'm like, wow, shit, <laughs> this, is, this, this is so cool. I need to dig into this. And I asked him, where, where, do, I even, where, where do I even start? Like yeah. the OWASP top 10, there's a lot of things to learn. What should I do? Because I never hacked web before. I, I was an infrastructure networking kind of guy. And, and he said, um, pick one bug class and, uh, and, and go from there. Learn as much as you can about it. 
when, when you find a bug, submit it, get paid, and then move on to the next one. I didn't go for the top 10 list on OWASP. So I went to see what, what other ones they had. And they had something called race conditions. And I knew race conditions because I work with infrastructure. So, so it was something that I digged into. And I realized how latency works and communication between the front end and the back end and how I could manipulate request data to get things to happen that was unexpected. And I found a bug and I got paid for it. And That's I'm like, brilliant. sweet. I used made 5K, awesome. How can I do this more? And then I got really involved and eventually ended up being a part of the live hacking circuit, traveled the world and um, won a most valuable hacker uh, belt from Hacker One, most valuable team with, uh, with two of my teams. And uh, I had had really, really good time. That's great. I mean, let, so let me, let me step back a bit. Um, Firstly, what is, what, what is a race condition just for people who don't know? And then um, can you explain what burp is as well? Okay, we can start with burp. Um, burp is a proxy. So when you have your, your browser, right, or, yeah. or your phone or whatever you have that you're communicating with using an app or a web browser with a server on the internet. And just like you can sniff traffic using Wireshark or, or some kind of tool that looks at the, the RF uh, channels or whatever. This is a tool that sits between the server and, and your browser. And since everything is mostly sent in HTTPS encrypted, you will need to install a certificate on your computer that says that, okay, I want, to be a, I want this proxy to be the intermediate, man in the middle for yeah. all the traffic that goes through the application. That means that you can manipulate the requests going out and responses coming back. It's like the, the matrix is for the, the first time I saw it, it's like you're starting up a browser and you think that you just hit in, entering one website. But what's happening is that website is going to reach out to you. Um, it's going to be all this Google tracking and JavaScripts and a lot of things that are happening in the back end. Like, so you can see that there's a huge amount of requests going out. And, and you will get amazed, like, wow, how many traffic people yeah. are, like, like, things are being sent out. And if you're able, when you're using tools like proxies, there's, there's Burp and there's uh, a free tool. And the community version is free, but if you want all the fancy stuff, you're going to pay for it. Uh, but then you have something called the SAP proxy, which is a free version. And there's some other containers coming out right now. Um, and it, it's just a tool that makes you, it, you can tap into the wire. You're listening to the traffic that goes through uh, in the network in clear text and yeah. you can manipulate the, the responses. That's, that's what it is. And a race condition, I think the easiest way to explain it is that imagine for a second that you and I are, uh, we're playing soccer. Or yeah. uh, so I am, you're, you're, in the, you're out in the field, I'm, I'm the goalie, so I'm standing in this big goal here, and you decide to uh, kick the ball against me. One ball comes my way, I can see that you're kicking it away, and I can see the ball come in, and I capture it, like, okay, sequence done. I kick it back, or <laughs> I kick it back to you, and, um, and you repeat it over again. That's yep. one way you're sending traffic. If there's two balls, in front of you, you kick one, I'll see that one, caught that one, caught the other one, and I'm still in sync with you. I understand yeah. what goes on here. But if you instead would take, I don't know, 50 to 1,000 balls and kick them at exactly the same time against me, I'm not going to be able to to pick and choose. Yeah. So maybe I'll, I'll capture three and four requests coming in, but there's a big chance that two balls come in at the same time. That's a race condition. Or if, let's say you had a vending machine, like these classic vending machines that you put money in, you push a button and the door would open and you can take your food out. Yeah. You're supposed to only press that once. And if you press it, you're gonna open that particular door and let you in. But if, if you're at the same time, you're putting your, 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 your coin in and at exactly the same time, three, two, one, and maybe you have four friends too as well that, that just pushes those bottom at the same time. There's a big chance that two or maybe three of those will execute at the same time so the, date, and so the door doesn't understand that one has already been opened. So it's going to open up two for you. That's also a race condition. That's interesting, and we're not we're not advocating that all of you go out there and try this now. But uh, uh, that's a great example. I, Hack I love all that the example. things, though. <laughs> Hack all the things. I that are in scope. Yeah, in scope. So yeah. You, so explain just for everyone who's watching, um, what is bug bounty, and again, based on your experience, 
What are your tips for anyone who's interested in doing this? Uh, bug bounties is a way for security researchers, <laughs> ethical hackers, noobs and experts, whoever that would like to uh, test the vulnerability um, surface or the attack surface of X said company. If they find a vulnerability there, there's a big chance that they want to communicate with someone and say, I found this vulnerability. I want you to take care of it. Usually yes. you needed to send an email to security at something or abuse at something and say, I found the security vulnerability here in your application. Um, I want you to fix it. But now we have these organizations like platforms. There's a bunch of them. There's HackerOne, there's Integrity, there's BugCrowd, there's there's Synac and, and, and a bunch of more. But what they do is that they will be the intermediate person. So I found a, a bug in the system. Let's say I found a bug in some of your um, your applications, maybe, and maybe you have a program with Hacker One. So instead of you getting flooded with all this information that's being sent in, you will let somebody else take care of it, and they will validate if the bug is valid or not. And if it is, they'll make sure that the payment goes out, and the payment could be anything from five hundred dollars to fifty thousand oh. dollars, depending on how it is. So maybe fifty, you know, some. some $50 maybe the lowest end. And sometimes you don't get paid at all, depending on what kind of definition that kind of program has. But bug bounty is a way for you to identify security vulnerabilities, report them in a safe way and get paid doing so. So it's a legal way, because you mentioned that word and I want to emphasize that word in scope. <laughs> It's a legal yeah. way within, and can you explain what that means? In scope, uh, uh, how is it legal? Because the company's paying someone to try and find these bugs for them, is that right? Mm -hmm. But maybe that company doesn't want you to poke at their whole infrastructure. Yeah. Let's say that you have, um, you have a domain. In yeah. my case, let's say I have stokefredic.com, that's my domain. Uh, and I have a couple of subdomains there. Maybe I have uh, uh, one that's just particularly just made for my dog. So it's, yeah. it's be the name of my dog dot my domain dot com. And there I have all the pictures of my dog. It's all cool. But then I have this app that I want to use to for people to communicate with me. And maybe that's on app on something. I don't want people to find vulnerabilities inside my dog portfolio because it, it, I don't want you to poke at it. it yeah. that's, then I'll define that that's going to be out of scope. Yeah. I don't want you to poke at that. If you poke at it, we're not going to accept that you found any vulnerabilities there. Even, even if they are, we might just fix them, but you're, you're, you're not supposed to poke at that. Yeah. That is what's def defined scope. So we want you to look at this. This is what programs do. And there will be uh, something that's defined as a star scope, which is... Anything, any any subdomain of a, of said domain. In in this case, like okay, maybe I have one that's dogs.stokefredic.com, cats.stokefredic.com, app.stokefredic.com, and then I have hey, it's my wife.stokefredic.com. And if all these are in scope, that that means that you're allowed to poke at them and help me find vulnerabilities in there. Okay, so basically. If I'm interested in doing this, I could go on to HackerOne as an example, and um, mm. I could sign up. And then are there companies like Uber and other companies listed there? And then I, mm. I, what's sort of the process? Do I just like see that this is an open uh, thing that I can check out? Like this is the scope, ha try and hack Uber and then try and go for it. Is that right? Yeah, and Uber is a good, good thing to say because Uber has a star scope. Anything that's involved or uh, affiliated with Uber is going to be in scope. They are interested because they are security mature. But another company maybe aren't at Uber's level yet. So to yeah. get there, they say, okay, these are the things that we want you to look at. Yeah. We don't, we will have no legal repercussion and we'll make sure that you're safe and we're going to take care of you as long as you're staying inside scope. If you go outside scope, maybe we're not going to be as gentle. It's not something that they're saying, but that, that's why I'm saying stay inside scope, because it's very easy to, like I said, you're visiting one, one website and then it just spiders away. Like there's a lot of JavaScript sending traffic to maybe some web servers elsewhere and whatever, still inside the same domain, but maybe that's not in scope. So it's very important to understand, like, what are you allowed to hack at? So, some programs maybe just are only interested for you to hack on their iOS application and yeah. not to hack on their website because their website is hosted on some WordPress thingy and they don't want to have excessive amount of traffic going there. So it's like, that's out of scope, don't poke at it. So I've, I've heard some people talk in the industry and I want to I make this clear. Is bug bounty a full-time job 
or is it only a part-time job? And if you know, what would you recommend? Would someone like re- should they resign their job and try and do this, or should they try and do it on the side? So, I mean, those are two separate questions. But like, is it a full-time thing or is it a part-time thing? And what would you recommend if I'm interested? What well, what would you recommend I do? First off, I'll have to ask you. What are you interested in? How do you want to spend your life? What are you, what, what things are important for you? Yeah. Because this is the answer that's extremely individual. Yeah. Some people say, that's the best choice I ever made. I want to be able to work the hours that I want to work. I don't want to have a boss. I want to be able to take vacation for months at a time, maybe, and then just crunch it a couple of months of the year. Uh, I want to be able to travel internationally. I want to be able to do the things that make me happy. And if you live in, like I live in Sweden, living costs here is quite expensive. And yeah. if you live in the UK and live in the US, maybe going full time isn't for you. But if you live in India, Pakistan, or some other com- company where $500 makes a huge impact on your yeah. lifestyle, yeah. why not? I mean, it's a global market right now. Everybody's, the choice is yours. Me personally, I've been doing bounties full time but then resigned going back into consultancy work or working for this other company now because I feel comfortable with um, repetitive paycheck. Yeah. Because I made a lot of money in batches, but it's really hard for me to uh, be in that successful over time because I'm going to have periods where I dip where I don't find anything. Maybe I'm not feeling too good. Uh, Maybe I'm not into doing heavy research. Uh, or maybe I'm just, I'm not interested. Working at a company that gives me a dynamic in that lifestyle and having that as a, as a hobby is something that I start out having. For me personally, I started doing bounties. Uh, when, when I got into this, I realized this is going to take time. And yeah. I'm not going to be able to do this at six o'clock when I'm done with work. Or I, maybe I, I get home from work at six o'clock, right? I'm going to cook dinner for, for my wife. We're going to take care of the dog. I'm going to do the, all the chores and all the things. Then at, you know, 9.30, I'm going to start to do some hacking. Usually at that time, my brain is fried. Exactly. It's not the most creative brain I have. Yeah. And doing bounties is something that you need to think outside the box because these targets are heavily tested. These are being run over and over again by pen testing firms, red teams, and, and a lot of other hackers are poking at them. So, of course you need to be on your edge. So I realized that quite fast. And, and my way of solving that was saying, okay, I'm gonna ask my boss politely and say, if I take a pay cut, can I have Thursdays off? I said, okay, cool, you can do that. So I started hacking every Thursday uh, and doing bounties. I got up at the same time, I got dressed, I pulled my coffee, I did my things, and then I hacked on these targets for eight hours. I was done with that. I went home with my other business. And in, in, within a few months, I made more money doing that than I did on my full-time salary, which made it kind of sweet for me to have both. And then I eventually just moved over into doing bounties full-time. And here I am now back in the loop again because it wasn't sustainable and maintainable for me to do that all the time. One day a week was perfect. So, I mean, th- that, I think that's really important that you said that because I, when, I, when I sort of re- researched your story, you were a full-time person in, a, in, a, in, a, in another job. Then you decided mm-hmm. to like um, take a pay cut at work or, you know, negotiate with your boss to take a day off a week. And then you, mm-hmm. you, you tested this on the side to see mm-hmm. if it was actually what you wanted to do. Um, yeah. Rather than, you know, I, I, I'm very much against like big bang, you know, just, you know, resign your job go full-time to study or to try something new. If you can do it part-time, it, it makes a lot more sense to do that and it's a lot less risky. And then you you made more money doing that on the side than your full-time job, is that right? Yeah. And, but the you were doing that, I, I can't remember now, was it for a year or two years that you were full-time and then you decided to go back to a job, is that right? Yeah, I was um, in, in the beginning on the, I resigned my work, uh, my job, because I was a part of the bug bounty circuit. I was traveling the yeah. world and I did, uh, in two years, I did like 13 live hacking events internationally. Wow. And I, I ended up in a situation where I realized that I, would, I was going to be away for about three months every year. Yeah. And I, I couldn't get that much time off my work. So I needed to do something. I needed to make an active choice. So do I quit here and, and continue doing this? Then sadly, COVID happened. Yeah, exactly. And bomb, the world shut down, no live hacking events. 
I did bounties for full time for about a year. And then I realized that I missed working on a team, team, yeah. uh, working on a team together with people and working with something that's, um, that makes an impact. Like I, I'm very much driven about purpose and I didn't feel that me as a solo hacker couldn't make the impact that I wanted on the world. So I joined TrueSec and, and felt that then I was contributing on a bigger picture. So what do you do now? I mean, it, how is it different to what, the bug bounty thing? What, what, what is TrueSec about? And there's not an ad for them. It's just to like try and you know, see your journey. Absolutely. It's, um, it's a cybersecurity company and, uh, and we're, we have most different sides. Like we have offensive teams, we have incident response teams, and we have monitoring the tech teams, of course. And my job there is to be uh, a part of the bridge between all the experts that work in the organization and the marketing side, yeah. because I speak both languages. Yeah. And, and sometimes that's not always yeah. uh, working yeah. out too good. Yeah. So, so what I'm doing there is, um, part of my job description is working with that. And then it's just being a part of um, incident responses, being a part of offensive red teams and all that stuff, because I, I've been doing all this for years. And instead of just doing one thing all the time, I'm a part of a little bit of all these different ones. And I'm primarily looking forward to uh, be a better purple teamer because I like just, just as well as I speak marketing and business and uh, hacking, I also speak red and blue. And sometimes these two teams aren't fully uh, compatible as well. You need a guidance forward, and that's where that's where where I come in play because I can speak with everyone. I want to step back a bit. If I'm 16 or 14, it doesn't matter. Let's say I'm a teenager, or yeah. I am awesome. Yeah, well, we wish. Welcome wish. to cyber. <laughs> yeah, we, well, I like that. So I was going to ask you: Can you? Can someone who's young? do bug bounty would you recommend it i mean you've walked this road like like me we've walked roads you've you've done a lot of things in your career looking mm -hmm. at what you know the landscape today would you recommend bug bounty for a young person absolutely i mean think about it if you had the possibility when you were 16 to poke at this million dollar companies these huge industries maybe it's one of maybe maybe you're a twitch gamer you're like all into twitch yeah. or or you're playing steam or whatever so your favorite computer game and if you're at the same time having that hacker hat on the, the hacker's mindset say if i did this i wonder what happened if you have that mindset on and you find vulnerability in these systems you can report it and and, and, and get paid for it. Or sometimes you don't get paid, that's fine too. But it's an experience for you to grow as a person and, and just evolve that hacker's muscle because it's all about changing the mindset and, and asking why does this work the way it does? And what happens if I do this? Uh, it's all about, it, it's testing, really. I, I love it because, you know, when we were young, and I don't want to say we were really old, but when we were younger, if we had decided just to like hack a company like Uber in those days, um, I mean, that's like jail time. And it's fantastic today that you can actually do that legally and get paid to do that. So you, in other words, you not recommending that someone has to go and do a whole bunch of other stuff, like do 20 years like you did of you know networking and servers and all that stuff before they try this. Can they just go straight away and, and, and give it a go? Yeah, why not? I mean, absolutely. I mean, th there's, the scene has changed so much over the few years. There's like, you're a great YouTuber. You create content that people look at and they learn shit. They, they can't, the things that you talk about, you can't learn in school. Exactly. Uh, so, and it's free on the internet. They can, they can consume your content and level up their game. And they can go ahead and poke at it. I do the, kind of the same thing. I talk about bug exactly. bounties and tools and firmware uh, uh, and, and frameworks and stuff. And people can just try and do that too. Although it's not all shiny, all good, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Because you need to understand that most of these targets that you're are going to be up against, that's public programs. These are battle-hardened targets. They're yeah. locked down. There's, it, 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 there's, it's not a hack-the-box lab. It's, uh, it's by design hardened. And if you find stuff there, it's going to might be really good for you or not at all because somebody else has found it and they haven't been able to fix it. So it's going to be what is defined as a duplicate, which is the only the first reporter gets paid. But that being said, having that access to your hand that you, maybe, you're, you're, maybe you're doing some hack the box, maybe you're doing some uh, try hack me or, or port swiggers web labs or whatever, 
and all this free stuff that's out there. And then you can go at Uber and, and look, how, how does this work? Or you can look at Yahoo or whatever. There's, there's so many different ways for you now to be uh, practicing. And that's what I did in the beginning. I didn't know how things worked. But I had Burp running as a proxy when I was surfing websites and I was looking at it like, oh, what does 200 mean? Was it four or three? Was that 500 internal server? Weird. And, and you see all this traffic that was just flowing through. And then eventually I figure out how things worked. And I read a, uh, and I watched a lot of YouTube series and listened to a lot of um, books. I, 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 I struggle with uh, reading books. I'm more like a, poking around the internet and Googling and falling down rabbit hole kind of person. And then practically just trying things that's out great. until uh, and, until I get too tired of it. And that's it. You need to just have a creative mindset, learn something new and poke at it. And if you do, and if you find a couple of bugs, imagine for a second that you are, uh, that you're successful in this and you can show that I have these disclosed reports. I have these write-ups that I wrote on Medium. I, uh, and this is my journey, how I went from totally noob to whatever. And you have that as your portfolio. And you entered yeah. the doors yeah. of Uber and said, hi, Uber, I'm currently blah, 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 placement on your platform. Uh, would you be interested in taking me on? I got so many hacker friends that yeah. got amazing careers through bounties because they focused on a program and said, I want to work there. I want to work there. I want to learn as much as possible about their organization and I'm going to hack them. And they hacked, hacked, hacked away. And they suddenly, you know, they're taking positions on that program, then getting noticed. So they're getting invited to events. They're getting invited to a certain stuff. And then suddenly you got a job, right? Yeah, I love it. I mean, I inter interviewed Neil Bridges and he, um, him and I have had a few interviews. And, and one of the things he, um, he mentioned and he sort of like ways to, you know, that whole thing in life, how do you get experience without experience? Who's gonna mm. give you a job with no experience? And it's, it's kind of like, you, you've kind of like said something very similar. Like if you, if you wanna get a job at Uber or Google or whatever, and you feel like that's such a stretch, would you say this is a, I mean, I think you've just, you've already said it. This is a great way to like get experience without having to like go through a gatekeeper, is that right? Yeah, for sure. And then you need to understand the networking uh, aspect of this as well. Because yeah. if you can show yeah. that you've been doing certain things and you're talking to the right people, you're, you're a great communicator in your reports, you're nice and people want to be around you, yeah. what's going to happen? They, they, they're going to say, we've got this up and comer on this program that's really cool reports. Yeah. It's, it's not the, there yet, but it's very creative and always nice. And yeah. I, I got so many good vibes here because people talk, that's yeah. the thing. Yep. And they're like, okay, yeah, now I'm gonna check him out. He's on my radar. And you know, and then it just propels into something else. If you've been an asshole, yep. people are really fast gonna know that you're an asshole. Yeah, I'm, so, glad, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, go on, sorry. No, that's it. Because in, for me, um, I'm all about the good vibes. That, yep. That's how it is. Yep. And I wanna communicate that in every situation that I'm in. If I can be the person that's likable, be the person that listens and care and, and can help others succeed without my ego being away and saying that, nah, mm, I'm just gonna hold back because this young buck is coming out here and I feel hurt a bit because I'm, I'm old and he seems way smarter than me. That, that would be like idiotic and the, the other way around. Like, okay, you go, you go, you got all the energy. So you, you haven't slept for two nights? Awesome, congratulations on you. Remember, shower, drink some water <laughs> and get some rest. Then you can get back to me when, you, when you're done hacking again. But awesome, you got the spirit. Yeah, I love it. I think you, you, I saw you tweet something about like, um, what, what, what did you say about a teenager? You, you're good, but a teenager is better, something like that. It happens all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was at the skate park the other day and I'm pretty, I'm, I'm done with it. I, I skate good. <laughs> um, and, and, and then this little shredder comes around, you know, half pint high and helmet on and just does things I couldn't even imagine. I'm like, whoo. I want to do that, and there's no chance I can do that because if I do that, I'll break and die. Oh. <laughs> and then, then you see, and then you're watching this. Uh, you see this report, and there's this young dude that's writing this great research, and like, 
wow, if I had that skill at that age, boom, the things I could destroy. And, and, and that's going to happen all the time because that's the circle of life. I need to yep. stay back and just show people the way, like, wow, you're doing good. I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> so so let's so let's do that. So I mean, I wanted. Oh, there's a few things I want to I want to push you on. Um, skills. I think mm. you've mentioned in other sort of interviews um, that you like Linux is a basic skill. Are there any? Is that a skill? Are there any other skills that you would recommend someone like get if they want to you know get into bug bounty or just uh, you know hacking red teaming in in general? Yeah, for sure, absolutely. I mean that that's the thing too <laughs> because. Cyber, like I want breaking into cyber. Okay, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's vast. Exactly, <laughs> it's huge. What, what are you passionate about? And if you want to do bounties, bounties is primarily uh, primarily hacking web. That's what you do. Like it, it's apps on on the phone or it's uh, hacking websites. That's primarily what you do. So of course you need to understand uh, basic network communications. You need to understand CNN and acts and ports and, and IP and all that stuff and DNS resolving. Get your network basics down, understand how that works. Communication, how a server communicates to client versus. Uh, and when you're done with that, study up on script languages. Maybe you're doubling, dabbling around with Python a bit or Bash, but you're primarily going to need to have some kind of Nix system that you run things on. Windows is all good and all, but and now with when you have this terminal that you can run like Ubuntu on, then it's all good. But get a virtual machine or a VPS that's a virtual private server in the cloud somewhere where you, you do your your hacking from because you want to be able to scale up and automate and you want this to be running while you're asleep because uh, automation is crucial in this game because if you want to figure things out or net or map out things that's going to take a lot of time because if you send too much traffic at the same time that service is going to say oh hold on 429 too many requests coming in stop it yeah. And you're getting Acme banned and the rest of the people in your home is going to get really sad because they can't watch Netflix no more. So <laughs> you need to have another system that's disposable, that you can just trash and you spin up a new one and a new IP or whatever. So it's some kind of Unix uh, knowledge or basic um, Linux knowledge, of course. And that's also where all the free open source tools are, the tools that you're going to need to be a good uh, offensive player because this is all we're, we're talking offensive work here this yeah. is, there's no defense in this this is all this is all about hacking and if you're hacking web is your thing and doing bounties sure that's the route you want to do if hacking hardware iot wi-fi that's another route there's just different routes you need to find the thing that's intriguing to you so i mean bu bug bounty i think you mentioned like um linux uh, you need some networking knowledge. Um, yeah. You need to understand about web. Is that right? Um, mm -hmm. Anything? So I just want to get terms. I think you mentioned Nix as as a term. So just explain what that is. Uh, Linux, um, web, uh, networking, just for like general terms. And then I want to come back to how do we get that knowledge. So uh, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, some kind of some kind of Linux based system. Doesn't really yeah. matter what it is, but something. Uh, um, then you're gonna need some web skills, understanding how does servers communicate with browsers and clients. Yeah. Yep. And then you're gonna need some kind of insights into HTML, JavaScript, CSS, APIs, uh, the the whole idea around how websites actually works or apps work. If you got those down, then you can start to doing different labs and learning things and just poking at stuff and have fun. You mentioned like hack the, hack the box and try hack me. Do you, do you recommend that as a way to like build up skills and you know learn experience, or do you do you have like a? I think it's difficult sometimes to you know I'm trying to give some people a path, and that's not always easy mm. to do. But like, okay, are cool. there any courses or like if you were starting? Let me let's go back. So if you were starting today, you're 16 mm. years old. What would you mm. do? What would you do? Like step one, step two? Do you have sort of like sort of a guideline? Okay, I would skip university. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, and, uh, you would skip that. If, if you want to do red teaming, bug bounty, no university, is that right? All, all the things that you need to do if you're passionate about that. Uh, history, you can learn through the books if you need to. Yep. But if you want to really get into hacking, just, you, there's so many free stuff available on the internet. So you, you, can, you can go from zero to working somewhere in, in 
in no time. And if you're willing to give up your time and say, okay, I'm willing to work for free. I'm, I'm, I want to intern at this place. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to do whatever. Then it's going to get way faster for you. Uh, yeah. But you need to show, show the hunger. And yeah. that's the thing. People are looking for people with passion. Everyone is always hiring. Everyone is always hiring if you show up and do the work. I like that. So, so all you need to do is pitch your idea. The, I'm passionate about learning this thing. These are the things that I've done. This is where I'm going and I'm here right now. Can you help me do the rest of it? Because most people say, I want to get into bug bounties. How do I start? I'm like, Google it. <laughs> that's, that's the response. Yep. Because if you just ask me how to solve a thing or, oh, so you made $15,000 on that bug. Show me the write up. No, do the work. That, that's the thing, because nobody's going to yeah. nobody's gonna give you anything for free. It sounds weird here. We were talking about things, free content for free. That, but what I'm saying is that... I no one, no one's going to do the work for you. I think that's... A, yes, exactly. No that's one's going to do the work for find, you. I couldn't you have find to put, the you have right to put, English word. Yeah, no, that's fine. You, you have to put the work in, don't you? So Yeah, that's it. You, you show up, do the work, and deliver results, and people will see what you're doing. But also make sure that you communicate with people yeah. because you can do the best work ever and never have your camera on in meetings or, or not be present or not going to conferences or not doing anything. People won't notice you. If you don't publicize your work, if you don't show up and, and, and communicate what you're doing, people won't notice you because this is a, we're living in an extremely social world. Uh, and be willing to say, I'm ready to work for this. I, I want to have that. How can I get there? Well, first, if, you want, if you're interested in getting started in bug bounties, just Google how to get started in bug bounties. There's a plethora of sites, Git, Git repos, um, YouTube videos, whatever, and they're going to give you a route, like a tiny, tiny way down the rabbit hole because this is a really big rabbit hole. And on your way down there, you're going to eventually find things that you're interested in. Like, oh, wow, that seems shiny. I want to go that route. And then you go down that and then you do the next one. I understand that. I mean, the, I mean, like on your website, you, you did like a, a top five. You know what the problem is? When you start, it's like often in a lot of tech technologies, you're kind of lost and you just need mm. someone to point you, like go there. Um, mm. Do you have any recommendations or any favorites? Yes. Um, Peter Jaborski wrote a book. Uh, he wrote two books, actually, on his journey. What he did was to document his whole journey from a beginner to an end, where he's covering all the bug classes. He's, uh, he's, work, um, he's working through uh, reports and explaining them and, and certain stuff. If you sign up for Hacker One, you can get the ebook for free. I got mad respect for Peter and the things that he done. He also, he's also on YouTube, so please check out his channel. He interviewed a lot of people. Then you got Nahamsek. Uh, he's also done a lot of work. Uh, there's so many smart people that he has interviewed for his recon show. Uh, there's a lot of information you can find there as well. The thing with books though, is that they get old real fast. Yeah, exactly. Because we're living in a society where new new uh, attack surfaces come out all the time, and and even though some, some it, it goes in cycles too, like '90s back again. You see some some of yeah. the old yeah. school bugs they're they're getting they're resurfacing, coming up again. But if you have to understand that the technology is going so fast right now that you need to stay up to date with, like check out things on Twitter, Google stuff, look at trends, what's happening, and and see what kind of CVs are coming out. What kind of research are people doing just over the last two years when the pandemic hit boom it was like an explosion in past traversal they were all back again it's like uh, what what happened because people got time to spend on vpn services because a lot of people just installed vpn systems all over so yeah. so people started to poke at those and so trends comes and go and i know it sounds like very vague but google stuff that that's it you need to understand how to find information and a way down this rabbit hole would be if you want to do bug bounties and web app pen testing the creators of burp uh, port swigger have something called the um, i think it's like burp web pen testers academy or something yeah. is by far the best labs out there uh, you can get started with that if you want to do something else hack the box uh, i think has some kind of web based stuff as well it's also good training uh, try hack me definitely has it they have this OWASP top 10 beginners guide 
it costs like 20 bucks a month or something to be a member. You can get access to all these labs. And while you're doing those, try to take that knowledge and adapt that and put that on real world targets. Because if you're just yeah. doing boxes, you're not going to be able to do real world because real world looks different. They are not designed to be broken. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam Langley's ctfchallenges.co.uk. I think that's the one. He has some really cool labs there. Those are definitely uh, bounty uh, lookalike things. He's made a bunch of really cool CTFs for Hack One and Hack the Box. Uh, no, uh, try Hack Me. So I would say do labs, poke around on that. But if you're really interested in this, pick one bug class. Study as much as you can around that. Learn as much as you can around it. Find that bug on a live target, move on to the next one. I love it. So, I mean, you, you chose race conditions. So like you, yeah. you find something that's of interest to you or based on sort of your experience and then try and hone your skills on that area. Is that right? Yeah. And then I went over to uh, uh, XML, XXXEs. And I fell in love with that. So, and, and now I'm like deep into XXE research and, and anything, that, anything that's related to XML makes my heart go like, woo, I'm all good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm reading up like the standards for SVG and see how can I can poke around things and just trying to figure things out. Anything that's blind and out of band, that's my jam. So uh, I love those. So, I mean, you mentioned like networking and I see a lot of people seem to mention this. Okay, I'm I'm young, 16, whatever, it doesn't matter. Oh, I'm just out of college. How do I network? Is it just follow people on Twitter or do I do you recommend LinkedIn? Do you have any sort of, from your experience, how do I get into this community? How do I get a good name? First off, uh, show up, in, inject yourself into conversations, but be, uh, don't, don't be, as, don't ask for anything. Just yeah. provide things or, or be a nice person to be around because people tend to levitate towards people that seems to be nice. And if yeah. you say, okay, I'm super introvert. I don't like meeting people. Uh, I have no interest in, in talking to people at all. So, okay, that's tough. It's going to be harder for you. Uh, but so maybe you should focus on getting some classes on communication. Start to talk in front of people because a very good way to understand something is to be able to teach it to others because you yeah. really need to understand how things work if you want to be able to teach it. Yeah. So you need to study up on that. And that means you're working on your communication skills and listening in and being very, um, like if you're giving things away to people and they're like, wow, that person's really nice. I want to, I want to engage with that person. You know, magical things happen. Yeah. That, so when I say networking, do the pandemic, it's been extremely hard, but there's it's like discourse you can hang out in or Slack channels or, or, or something or, or, or Twitter or whatever. And maybe you'll find somebody that you want to collaborate with. But if you're collaborating with people, you need to understand that if you're doing bounties with people and collaborating, this is a money game. And there's trust involved and you need yeah. to build that trust to a level where somebody says, I'm okay, I'm willing to share my bounties with you. I'm willing to share my secret sauce with you. And I would expect something in return. Maybe not all, but, but I would say, I would at least be a bit cautious uh, on, on, on just giving away whatever secrets I have for, for something, because that's, that's kind of your, your side hustle. That's, yeah. your, that's, your, that's your money making machine. So in bounties is a little bit different than collaborating on, let's say, Hack the Box, which is a CTF. So it, 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 you need to find, it, it's a fine balance, but creating trust and talking to people and being engaging and writing stuff or sharing things and just being curious, showing up. Now when conferences are opening up again, go to those. If there's a local OWASP meetup in your area, go to that one. If there's some kind of event happening around cyber, cool, do that. If it's not, create it. I mean, it's a lot of, you know, like it, during the pandemic, and I mean, we've never met, but we've communicated online. There's a lot of social ways to connect. For sure. And, you know, people have different, I'm, I always say people have different strengths. Some people write well. I don't write that well. Um, some people are better at video. There's so many options on social to, um, to share. I, I wanted to get to this point. What is the negatives? So like Bug Bounty, what is from like what you've seen? I think one of the things you said is that you were alone. Uh, are there any mm. negative things about Bug Bounty to be aware of? Absolutely. I mean, there's shitloads of things that's negative about Bug Bounties. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it, in, if you want to play this game, you need to have persistence. This yeah. is not a sprint. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme. If you're into that, do crypto. 
Like if you if you're interested in this and doing it long term, I see it as a way to build a career, to build muscles because yeah. uh, bug bounties is like pen testing, but you're running with weights. It's just harder, it's just yeah. more challenging. But if you reach your goal, it's going to be rewarding and nice, and you're happy and the thing with bounties is that uh, you found a bug. I found the same bug. You reported it before me. I wrote a great report. You wrote broken here, point. You're, if you were first, you're going to get paid. I'm not. So it, it, it's, it's a balance game there as well. So there's always this risk that you're not going to get paid. Then there's the 90-day cycle. Some companies only pay out every 90 days. How do you stay sustained for 90 days without income? Yeah. That's the thing too. So it needs to be something that's over time repetitive. And you're gonna go into what I define as the ebb and the flow of bounties. Like sometimes like it's all good. Sometimes it's all shit. So it, <laughs> you you get through the motions. Like that that's how it is. And uh, and, and you need to understand you need to take breaks too. Because your brain is gonna get fried out with all this information that you're trying to just crunch into your head and then you can stay, you can stand back and relax a bit. And what's going to happen is that maybe a week goes by, maybe a month goes by, and then it happens. That itch, the thing that makes you just you're browsing through Twitter and you're like, hmm, God damn, that, that, that seems interesting. Maybe, maybe I should just, and then, you open up the laptop and you, and then you add it again and then boom, you're, you're back in the loop. It's that cycle that you're going to go through and that's normal. So just understand the ebb and the flow and that bounties for me personally is a great side hustle. It's a great way to strengthen your muscle. It's a gym where you've been doing the, you've been doing the first, like the organized things in, in, in the lab. So you're ready, you get your basic stuff. But if you really want to step it up a bit, then you do, do bounties and you have fun with that. But you need to understand that even though I've, I've said that anyone can do it, I realize that not anyone can do it. Yeah. And I'm humble with that understanding. I, I spoke out of my own experience and um, I'm, I'm a fast learner. I love puzzles. My mind just thrives in that environment. Others don't. So maybe that's not for you. If, but if, if you haven't tried it, you don't know. Yeah, I love it. If you, if, you don't, if you don't try it, you wouldn't know if it's for you or not. And I yeah. agree, you know, everyone has skills and, and um, some, some of us are strong in some areas and some of us are weak in some areas. But if you don't try this, how would you know? So um, you'd, you'd, you'd recommend, you know, especially if you're younger and, you want, and you're not sure where you're going and you want to get experience, this is a great way to like try and, and actually test, yeah? Some of the smartest people I know, under 20, mind-blowing, yeah. great hunters, so insanely smart researchers. I would say so many people I'm, that I hang around here, I can be the dad easily. And, it, and, and I yeah. love that about hacking because yeah. hacking generally is nobody cares about your gender. Nobody yeah. cares about how old are you. Nobody cares about your color, the language you speak or where you live. Yeah. It's all about what do you bring? I, that's what I love about the way the world is these days. You know, you and I are not based in Silicon Valley. We're not based in the US. We're based somewhere else. No. I love it that the world... Um, has changed so that you know you don't have to try and get through some silly gatekeeper. You, if, if you can bring it, like you said, if you put the work in, if, if you can bring it to the table, um, you can win. And if you're good at bounties, then you're going to be great at other pen testing areas. And maybe you think that pawning web is boring, then pen testing internal networks is your thing. Maybe not even that. Maybe you realize that I want to make an impact by working in incident response. But yeah. since you know the tools that attackers use, you're going to be extremely valuable in the situation because you can help track that first patient zero back because you understand how the movement works. You understand how the breach happened. So I want to, I want to get philosophical for a while and just, um, we've, we've done a bit of that, but I want to, you know, you, you, you said it yourself, you're like a fatherly figure sometimes. Um, what advice would you give to these to young people? Is there anything like, not just bug bounty, but like any advice that you would give them in, in a career in hacking or tech? What would you advise? First, check your health, like mental yeah. health. Seriously, it, yeah. in this day and age, it's even more important. Like I got diagnosed with ADHD at age 44. Wow. 
I wish that happened way earlier. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But but I also, you know, it gave me some kind of calming experience and understand that my mind doesn't work like most other people do. And I'm yeah. okay with that. Yeah. It was yeah. like a soothing feeling of understanding that it's all good. And then understand that you are the product of your own mind. You are the product of the ideas that you want to put into this world. If you want to be a great pen tester, then start becoming that. But you need to you, you just walk your way. If you, if you think it, it's going to happen. Nobody's going to give it to you. But if you, if you set a goal and work towards it, I know it's all hippie shit and affirmations stuff. But if, if you really believe it and say that's going to happen, there's like no power stopping you because you're going to align your life towards that goal. And everything that you do is going to be motivated in going in that direction. There's no, nothing going to stop you. But you need to understand what you want because yeah. things can't align for you if you don't know what you want. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have a goal, what are you going to aim for? Exactly. And, and it doesn't need to be a huge goal. I never have this five-year plan that people talk about because yeah. my life is too hectic. Yeah. And, and don't be worried if, you're, if you don't know what you want to do. There's something in your life that you're passionate about. And... That could be anything from like, oh, I'm into computers now, or I'm into playing Minecraft now. I'm into something, you know, whatever you're passionate about, let that be something in your life. But it doesn't need to be the only thing. I went through my life doing a lot of stuff. Like I, I do hacking. I have a sustainable fashion store. I run a clothing brand. I'm, um, I'm a sustainable living advocate. I've, I've traveled the world. I lived in Bali for months and on and on. I'm a yoga teacher, trainer, blah, blah, blah. I got all these different things that's been yeah. a passion in my life. And I let myself be indulged in that and follow that until I find something else that I'm passionate about and not afraid for change. Because if you follow your heart, you know, you're going to be happy. In the end, I know it's very Gary Vaynerchuk to say, but <laughs> happiness is the thing that you can buy it. And, yeah. and it, it kind of comes from inside. But we also know that our brains are wired for survival, which means that we're not meant to be happy. <laughs> We're meant to survive. So sometimes this is going to work against us. But we need to understand. But as soon as we understand that, we can just a a aim towards what's going to make me happy. What, what, do I, what do I enjoy doing? Like, for instance, one thing that really gives me satisfaction is talking to people yeah. and learning new things. Those are the things that I'm extremely passionate about. Yeah. Sometimes it's tech. Sometimes it is, it's how to make a great worm compost doesn't really matter. I like learning new stuff. But I mean, isn't that the hacker mindset? You, you're trying to understand things, try and break it necessarily, or maybe, or, or do something. I mean, you, it's, in, it's inside of you to try and discover how things work. Yeah, hackers, makers mindset, de definitely. Some of the people that watch these videos are not 14 or 16 or 18, and we were talking a lot about young people. What about someone who's a bit older? Would you recommend, you know, if I'm 30, um, I have a lot of people who, who've sent me messages like they were a, uh, a, a, um, a ambulance driver or a nurse or they were in retail something like that and, and they, mm. they I think the pandemic has really you know changed people's views about what they're doing with their lives would you mm. have any advice for them I got the question too people say that dude I'm 35 yeah. uh, or I'm 25 <laughs> is it too old to get into hacking <laughs> exactly like, yeah <laughs> Seriously, it's never too late for anything yeah. as long as you're passionate about it. As long as you want it, it's never too late. I like so, that. So, of course, like if, if you want, but if you think that you're going to do uh, a five-year reschooling and then you eventually be this super person, that's not going to happen. There are ways to go through school. I just think that these... Uh, two or three year schools that you go through, they, they give you such a narrow understanding of things that you have no depth. And yeah. it's like you're poking all these tiny things. I would rather suggest that find something that you really, really, really like and nerd into that. And then be like, I wouldn't say expert, but really good at that stuff. And you just add things on because then you have this niche that you're really good at and you can just go from there. Because in this day and age, let's imagine for a second that you were a COBOL programmer. Do you know how valuable you are? Exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and 
and if you're, if, but if you think you're going to do bounties and say, mm, what is the easiest bug class? Maybe XXS is going to be my thing. Then you're like, oh, you and 600,000 other people doing the same thing. Yeah. That's why I choose race conditions because that's a different kind of beast. You find something that you can niche out in and be really good at. And then you're adding value because you're sticking out. And, and if you want to do certifications, do that. If you want to do all this other stuff, do that too. Because you don't know who's going to look at your application. Somebody maybe thinks that CEP is the, the best certification in the world, or CP or whatever. And, and somebody else would say, like, I don't give a crap about that. Yeah. How, how, uh, let's do a technical review and see what these people, the person is talking about. And if they gibberish on about things they don't know, I'd rather say, like, okay, maybe you don't know that. Or you're just being honest. I don't know this. But I'm willing to learn. Do you know it? Can you, yeah. can you explain it to me? Yeah. And, and just being curious because it's all about being curious and, um, and the information is out there. And everything for you to go from zero to nothing, like you don't need to spend that much money to get really good at computers today, like yeah. especially hacking if you want to do that. There's, there's so much information. It's going to be hard if you want to do like incident response or, or real advanced uh, defense work, primarily because I think that's a area where you need to have a little bit more of like experience of older systems and such, um, because most systems aren't the latest yep. uh, Kubernetes build, uh, super fancy old stuff. But if, if let's say that you're, a, I would say if you're if you're working in tech today and uh, you're you're doing uh, sysadmin work, move into cyber. Like cyber's thirsty as fuck. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can say we, you can say what you like. I like it. I'd rather have the raw need, raw need, person. Go go for it. We need people there. Yeah. And if you're doing uh, if you're doing sysadmin work today and you want to get into pen testing, do it. Do it now. It's awesome. Come to the dark side. It, it's <laughs> fun. We have cookies. <laughs> this is where you need to move. And then, but if you want to do defensive work, that's cool too. But there's never too late. It's never too late. This is why I love tech. I mean, I've seen it many times. We've been, you and I have been in this game for a long time. Who cares about analog modems, ISDN and all that old stuff? You know, who cares? Use you know, robotics. Yeah, yeah, who cares about that stuff? I mean, some of the people watching might even not know what we're talking about. Mm. What I love about this is if you're starting today and you start on sort of new stuff, um, in two years' time, five years' time, you know, you could be the expert in whatever that field is. Um, yeah. You, when you started, you looked at like the OWASP t top 10, sorry, and then you uh, decided to jump into one of those um, areas. Is that Bug right? clashes, yeah. And would you recommend someone do something like that? Or is it yeah, just absolutely. like- Absolutely, why not? I, I do do that. Like learn the top 10 most vulnerable web classes today. Like yeah. th these are the things that people are struggling with and learn how that works. Or even even better, get into web three um, and, and understand uh, like how, how does the blockchain work? How does smart contracts work? How the DeFi or, or all that stuff, how does that work? Because it's gonna be an extreme need for auditing in that area and understanding how that code is built. Uh, and what's also interesting is that we can talk about, oh, it's all Web3 and it's all decentralized and pretty awesome. And then they have this portal over here that's old school web style that's broken as, and then that's going to be the one that people stole a lot of money through. So you, you, you kind of need both, but if you're interested and uh, I would say there's going to be a high demand for people that at least understands how um, how the smart contracts works in that world. So if that's something you're interested in, go down that route, uh, but understand that you need to understand the basics. And it's like basics first, <laughs> then depth on whatever subject you like. So are you saying that if I started today, Web3, blockchain, that kind of stuff is where you would focus or like you said, start with the basics or would you just go straight into that? I mean, yeah, why not? I mean, it's it's an area that's extremely young. It's, uh, uh, or extremely, it's, it, it's a couple of years old, but it's an area where people aren't heavily invested into um, to that area. And, and if you can be really good at, and, at auditing smart contracts and understanding how this works and find vulnerabilities in that, not, not only can you make a big buck, but you can be a very important asset for pen testing firms, for cybersecurity organizations that want to niche into that. Because 
people that are heavily invested into Web2 maybe want to keep on doing their stuff that they're doing currently. And there's going to be a high demand for people in this new niche. And who knows? After that, it's going to be Web4 or Web3.11. Who knows? <laughs> uh, uh, there's something's going to happen. And Shane, that, that's why I love this space, because it's ever evolving. And you need to be stay up to date and, uh, and, and just evolve with the times. Stoke, yeah. I really want to thank you so much you know, for sharing your experience and your knowledge. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's fantastic to get input from people in different spheres and different life stories. So I really mm -hmm. want to thank you for, you know, sharing with us. Well, I'm happy to, that, that I have the possibility. I'm super passionate about cybersecurity, cybersecurity awareness, and see what comes next. So um, to all the people that are out here and just uh, loving the things that David do, uh, stay curious and uh, I'll see you around. I've put all the links below, social media links and other really important links. So make sure that you click on those. Make sure that you subscribe um, and, you know, all the very best.